Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon, and I'm, I'm gonna go there. Uh, guys, I'm gonna go there. I'm gonna talk about Star Trek Discovery. This is a show that I have not watched. I don't care. Uh, I really don't care about the new era of Star Trek. Like I said before, uh, I did watch a couple episodes of Picard, and I was uh, uh, disappointed in what I had seen. I think the first episode was okay-ish, and then it seemed like it was turning into Blade Runner, not Star Trek. But I'm going to talk about Discovery because there's been a lot of chatter about just how popular current Star Trek is. And there seems to be three pillars, uh, three pillars of classic science fiction that have all been eroded in a very, very short period of time. If you follow other YouTubers like uh, Nerdrotic and Geeks and Gamers, they talk about Star Wars and Star Trek being in the gutter and uh, you know we talk often about doctor who being in the gutter these are three classic uh science fiction uh properties from the 60s and 70s that have withstood the test of time they've been around for decades and in like five years all three have been destroyed uh, all three of these franchises have been destroyed their viewership has dropped uh, they're not lucrative financially anymore, and Star Trek definitely is one of them. Even though they're trying to throw everything against the wall to see what sticks, Discovery has been panned widely by Star Trek fans. Uh, we're going to talk about the ratings on it. Again, I've seen bits and pieces of it. I don't care to watch the show. It, it doesn't appeal to me at all. Uh, it doesn't look like Star Trek at all, and actually... What did it for me were the freaking Klingons. They, like, what the hell were they thinking? They don't even look like Klingons. Uh, very, very strange choices they made with this show, and it seems that the general public doesn't give a shit either because the ratings are very, very bad. They put Star Trek Discovery on CBS. Now, it was on CBS All Access, which is now being rebranded as, like, Paramount Plus or something because CBS All Access wasn't really pulling in the numbers they needed to pull in. But the numbers are bad. People don't care about this show. They just don't care. Um, so this is coming from Bounding in the Comics, and I think that they are getting their information from other YouTubers, including Doomcock, who has been following the Star Trek Discovery debacle much, much closer than, than we have. But uh, it just shows how little interest there actually is in this new incarnation of Star Trek, in, in Kurtzman-era Star Trek. And... Uh, you know, I've already had my heart broken by Star Wars and Doctor Who. I didn't want to go back. Uh, I did check out Picard, but I'm like, yeah, I already see where this is going. No, thank you. No, thank you. All right. So Star Trek Discovery posts abysmal ratings in first season's official CBS debut coming from Bounding in the Comics. I would link to it, but YouTube does this thing now where when you link to articles, on websites that they don't approve of for some reason they actually will give you a channel strike it's it's freaking ridiculous cbs's attempt to introduce star trek discovery to a wider audience via network broadcast uh, has backfired as the series full premiere on broadcast television has resulted in abysmal ratings numbers Last month, amid rapidly declining viewership numbers for the latest Star Trek series, current franchise development head Alex Kurtzman announced that Star Trek Discovery's first season would officially debut on broadcast television. Black alert! Hashtag Star Trek beams to broadcast for a limited time with a special presentation of the first season of CBS's all-access Star Trek Discovery. Coming to CBS Network beginning September 24th, everybody, black alert! Unfortunately, Discovery's lateral move from CBS All Access to CBS Proper appears to have failed to entice more audiences to watch the series. According to Variety, Discovery's broadcast debut netted only a 0.2 rating among adults 18 to 49 and drew a tragically low 1.7 million viewers. Ouch! Ouch. Now, here's the thing. Some people are going to say, well, it's already been out there. It's already been on CBS All Access. The numbers for CBS All Access are not great. Most people don't have CBS All Access. That's why they have to they have to rebrand as Paramount Plus because it's not pulling in the numbers they needed to pull in to be able to compete head to head with like Netflix and Disney Plus and HBO Max and all that. So, you know, people weren't watching it on CBS All Access either. 
Uh, this is coming from Variety, so this isn't this isn't biased fanboy media. CBS rounded things off with the broadcast debut of Star Trek Discovery, which didn't exactly set the galaxy alight with a 0.2 rating and only 1.7 million pairs of eyeballs. And that's for the first episode. You know, it always declines after that. Uh, everything drops off a cliff after that. For comparison, rerun of the Michael Weatherly-led legal drama Bull that aired two weeks ago in the same 10 p.m. time slot pulled in 1.9 million viewers. Technically, this is the second time this particular episode has aired on CBS as it was previously aired as a special preview in 2017 to promote the series' then upcoming first season. Maybe they should have taken a hint. Uh, people <laughs> weren't interested. The broadcast back then managed to pull in 9.6 million viewers for a total rating of 1.9, most likely due to the general interest in the first new Star Trek series in years and its time slot immediately following that week's Sunday night NFL game. Well, yeah, you've got football as a lead-in. Of course, it's going to do better. It's new Star Trek. Now that people know what to expect from the new era of Star Trek, they're tuning out. You know, you fool people once. Look what happened with Doctor Who. The first episode with Jodie Whittaker drew massive ratings, right? Because people were like, wow, we want to see the first female Doctor. Um, they've got a new showrunner. They've been hyping this thing up for like a year now, two years. And it drew massive ratings. And we saw it drop off a cliff as people actually watched the new seasons of Doctor Who. And they realized that the show was trash. And it was boring. And it was edutainment. Uh, they tuned out, and that's kind of what happened with, with Star Trek. I think they were expecting Star Trek, and uh, they got Discovery instead. <laughs> Though the series was exclusive to the CBS All Access streaming platform in the U.S., Discovery was broadcast in Canada on the CTV network and provides some numbers for further comparison. So in Canada, it had a viewership of 2.274 million, but by the end of the first 15-episode season, it only pulled in 927,000 people. Again, this is very comparable to Doctor Who. This is what happens. And I, you can actually look at uh, Disney Star Wars, too. This is what happens. People are excited by the brand. They're excited by the brand. They're excited by you know the prospect of, of getting more of what they love. And then when they realize that these franchises are shells of their former selves, they tune out. Happened with Star Wars. Force Awakens did gangbusters. And, uh, you know, fool me once. Then the numbers for The Last Jedi were not that great. And then by the time we got to The Rise of Skywalker and Solo, things trailed off. They fell off a cliff. Doctor Who, again, same thing. Jodie Whittaker's debut episode, huge numbers. And then as people actually watched the show, they're like, what the hell is this? And they tuned out. And that's what happened with Star Trek. People were like, oh, new Star Trek. Awesome. We love Star Trek. What the fuck is this? Why am I watching this? What did they do to Star Trek? Why are the Klingons so damn ugly? You know, and then they tuned out. The lack of interest in the series would bleed over into the second season as the premiere episode failed to appear, even appear in the top 30 rankings during its debut week. I don't even think Enterprise had ratings this low. I don't even think Enterprise had ratings this low. I think Enterprise, I remember the ratings weren't great and it was on uh, what, uh, the Paramount channel or whatever. But I think the ratings were better than this, if I recall. Because I actually watched Enterprise. I loved Enterprise. Uh, until the, the last episode. It was terrible. The last episode was terrible. If they had stopped Enterprise one episode shy of where they ended it, I would have been very happy. Anyway, uh, viewership numbers would only continue to plummet as the season two finale couldn't even manage to draw 816,000 total viewers. The total viewership numbers for The Blacklist, the 30th ranked show in Canada for the week of April 15th to April 21st, 2019. Um, the Orville beat out Star Trek Discovery in Canada. The Orville, which was uh, originally, originally a parody of Star Trek, the parody has actually eclipsed the actual show. Now, there's been talk, uh, rumors of Seth MacFarlane getting a hold of actual Star Trek. That might be the best thing that could happen to it. Who knows? So Doomcock was talking about it. He said the numbers are in, folks, and there's no disputing the numbers. Uh, I said, granted, this was the second airing of a widely watched episode from a less than current season. This initial reception to the series' public debut does not bode well for the series' future on the broadcast channel. It's going to be relegated to a streaming service where you can't tell 
what the numbers actually are. And I would love to know the numbers of Netflix shows, of Disney Plus shows. Uh, I would love to know because I think there's a lot of three card Monty being played here to get these shows to, you know, continue to be produced. I think there's a lot of three card Monty and uh, it just looks like <laughs> it's it's over. Star Trek is, is trash between this and Lower Decks, which is complete trash. I mean, it's freaking family guy style. Star like, what the hell are they thinking? You know, Picard was the only show I had any hope for. And I actually was looking forward to Picard. Uh, I was. And then as, you know, the showrunner started talking, that's usually what, what happens with me is like, I'm, I'm really interested in something until the people working on the show start talking. And then my interest wanes. Uh, Star Trek Lower Decks actor Jack Quaid says, F, F Donald Trump. Everybody's got to get political now. You know, uh, they do. But what happened with Picard was... I was super pumped for it. I was like, yeah, this might be this might be what we need. Go back, you know, there's there there are a lot of stories to tell yet in the next gen uh universe. I'm not a big fan of the um the JJ Abrams retcon. I'm like, let's go back to the next gen era and see where this goes. This might actually be pretty good. And then as the director showrunner started talking and Patrick Stewart started talking, I'm like, ah oh, shit. This is not gonna be good. This is not going to be good. And I got two episodes in. I'm like, I already see where this is going. And I am freaking out. I'm out. First episode was okay. But uh, after episode two, I'm out. And I'm glad I, I did dip out because I checked clips of other episodes online. Uh, read some reviews of other episodes. I'm like, there's no way in hell I could have sat through that entire season and have them tear down next gen the way that they did uh, just, to, just to get woke points. Fist bumps on Twitter uh, for pushing modern day, overtly pushing modern day politics. Now, Star Trek has always been political, you know, somewhat, but it's always been handled with a bit of finesse. We always had like an alien race as a stand in for certain kinds of people or whatever. But uh, yeah, Woke Trek is is dead on arrival. And of course, you know, what's going to happen is the showrunners are going to blame the fans. They always do. I'm sure they are right now. I just I haven't seen those articles but uh, there we go guys discovery when it's actually put on network tv cannot hold its own people are tuning out so i'm gonna wrap this one up please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants and we'll talk to you guys later